Some months ago, I ran across this little ESP32 board with onboard battery control and charging, and this has fast become one of my favorite little boards to use with MicroPython and in Arduino IDE. Today we'll get it out, get it programmed in MicroPython, we'll also program it in Arduino and give you a quick look at an upcoming project with it. For electronics projects, I love using PCBWay.com to make my printed circuit boards. They have amazing service, lots of different options, and can make PCBs at a really budget price for any electronics project. So I don't know where I discovered this board initially. I think it was on one of my web crusades and decided to just give one a try because I liked the small form factor and I really liked the fact that I could plug a single cell LiPo battery into it and have it handle the charging. The fact that it's ESP32 based makes it a pretty powerful little microcontroller and has a lot of the GPIO already broken out as well as the antenna for the Wi-Fi is on the board and no components on the backside, which is kind of a plus for different mounting situations. As with all of my projects, I started a GitHub repo. I already had one for ESP32, but I started adding all the reference materials for this little Wemos 32 Lowland light board, um, just so I'd know where to find them. And it's just a one-stop shop for me to go find pin references and whatnot. And as well for later projects, well, we've included some more handy information as well. Now I've been using the Thawney IDE for MicroPython lately just because the Raspberry Pi Pico got me started with it and I'm finding it super easy to work with so I just had to flash the board to the newest definition for this, um, the newest uh, firmware files and they're pretty easy to find, everything's in my GitHub too and flashing was super super easy as it always is. I went to the MicroPython site to find everything and verify that I knew what was up and down, they had everything clearly outlined right with the Raspberry Pi Pico as well. Easy to find, easy to navigate. I like it already. The only trouble was there wasn't a lot of tutorials out there because this is seemingly not a really popular board. So I kind of just had to wing it a little bit now and again to figure things out. But the firmware download was pretty straightforward and away we went. This is the one I used in my case. Download it, fire it up in Thawney and away we go. I'm by no means an expert in MicroPython, it's entirely new to me, but I'm starting to warm up to it a lot for really simple projects. I sped this part up a little bit. This is the longest part of the entire process of waiting for the firmware to program. Even then, only a couple of minutes and we were all set. I'm starting to get it now. It's just that simple. There we are at the REPL. This thing is alive and talking to the USB. Everything is just working just with that upload and nothing else. I'm pretty impressive. Now with my projects, I usually just play around with them at this stage, printing hello world stuff just to see whether it works, then try it as a script, then see if we can save it on the device and have it run automatically. And all these super easy. It took just minutes. Then I do what I always do. I try a Blink sketch or a Blink script or a Blink program, depending on the platform. It's always the same. I just mess around until I get it to work. And once I've got a blinking LED, well, then I can move from there and start using the device for different projects. The hardest part is generally just knowing what GPIO the LED is on. This one is MicroPython makes it super, super easy as always. Just a few lines and away we go and we can blink it. And sure enough, when I plug it into USB power on the bench here, it was we have a blinking LED. Uh, we have a charge light on as well because I'm charging the onboard LiPo. If you remove the USB, it keeps running because it runs off of the LiPo battery, which is super cool. I really love this device. Check out the CH340 chip there. That's our USB to serial chip. Another really awesome chip that doesn't rely on FTDI drivers. I like it. Programming this board in the Arduino IDE I found to be super simple. These are the settings to use for this board that I found that worked and it just works wonderfully. You don't have to do anything special with the firmware or remove the MicroPython, just flash the board and away it goes. The only limitation I ran into was having to use a new IDE to upload the spiffs, the files for the web page and whatnot. Uh, my old IDE that I use doesn't support ESP32 spiffs add-on, so I had to add that, no problem, works wonderful. 
In a future video, we'll go over this project when it's finalized. This is the ESP32 with a thermal couple, and as well, I'll be adding the BME280, which is a temperature, humidity, and pressure sensor, all of which send everything out to a live web page and graph the values real time on my, on my phone, no problem. It's exactly what I needed for tuning small engine stuff. Pretty cool. I couldn't find a footprint or a KiCad library for this component, so I hit up Fiverr.com and had a developer make one for me. Uh, I'm not real good in KiCad design that way, so this was easier, and I went ahead and gave it away to all of you free on my GitHub repo. It's in the ESP32 folder, and here's the files. If you like what I'm doing here, if you like me giving away open source stuff, consider supporting me on Patreon down below or become a channel member. It really helps. These money goes right back into projects like this. Cheers, guys. Good luck in all your projects. Let me know what you're building in the comments below. Click a thumbs up before you go. Cheers. <laughs>